Welcome back from lunch. Um, I hope you enjoyed the very colourful lunch spread we had today. It's very interesting. Um, I'd like to introduce to you now Peter Jansen. Um, Peter is the Systems Administrator at the University of Auckland, um, has been for more than 10 years there, and he works mainly with Primo, Alma and Discovery Tools. And he's going to be talking to you this afternoon about um, the University of Auckland's Discovery Zone. So welcome, Peter. Thanks, everyone. Um, I'm going to just start off um, by giving a little tour of Discovery Zone really briefly, and then I'm going to do a PowerPoint to describe it a little bit. So, so this is our new Discovery Zone. Um, I'll just, it searches Primo and a lot of other um, resources, but it's not actually using the Primo search engine. So I'll just search for foreign policy. And as you can see, it comes back with books, articles, journals. Those are all from Primo. Audio, video, uh, video images also from Primo and TV and radio which is a separate database um, and then we also search our databases we search in a separate exams database and a separate theses database now to give you an example of the exams database if you, the exams we scroll down we click on that displays it in our own unique format and you can click on that and then if you sign in, up pops the exam. Now if I go back, go back to the start. We also have our catalogue, and that is the Primo catalogue. Um, what we've decided to do is split um, our search into two. Discovery Zone is a one-off Google-type search that gives brief results from source databases. If you want a more in-depth search, if you want to do advanced searching, then you go into the native database, and we consider Primo simply one of the native databases, just like any other database in our system. There's nothing particularly special about it. Now I'll go to the PowerPoint and you'll see. So that's our discovery zone. Um, we've got, it shows everything that's in Primo and everything that is in our other databases. And it's enabled us to use Web 2.0 um, capability. So we've got, if you look at contacts or help, we get an overlay which drops down. I can show you that later. So, so the reason for doing it is that we have the old Primo, which you've just seen, which is that clunky interface, and this was our website prior to our redevelopment. This is our 2000 and up to 2000, December 2015 website. It's got a whole lot of um, links to it. It took, at one point, it took 91 clicks to get to someone's resource, which we did testing for. So we decided we needed a complete redesign, and we had to make some fundamental decisions. And the first decision was, are we going to use leverage ex libra searching? or are we going to build a standalone search engine? One of the questions you have to answer if your library is thinking of doing that is do you have the resources to build a standalone search engine? Because if you build it standalone, you're also going to have to develop it and support it. Um, we decided that we did, and one of the reasons that we did is that we also had Symplectic. So we, we were building 
databases, or we were building some Plectic for research support. And in order to do that, we had two DSpace programmers and an ancillary programmer already on board. So for us, it was a question of, we have resources building some Plectic, can we use those to also build a discovery zone? And we decided that we would, and we would fund it accordingly. Now, what does what? As I mentioned, the discovery zone is a single quick search. It searches all of our data um, and returns the top um, 10 records from each. So the top 10 primo records, the top 10 exam records, the top 10 TV and radio records are returned, and then you can do further searching if you wish. The, th the third thing you have to determine is the technology framework. It has to be modular, scalable, and compatible with the existing technology, and it also has to be compatible with future technology. <coughs> then there's the design and the UI framework. Now, this is the, this is the part that um, I disagreed a little bit with Matt Borg about. Matt was saying we need all the survey and we need to do this user stuff. Um, we decided, a little bit like Apple decided with the tablet, <coughs> a lot of users don't actually know what they want. So um, we have a lot of expertise in uh, design and that's one of the resources that we added. We, there was a position for a UI um, designer and we've now got a specialist um, interface designer. So that's he's part of the development team. So he gave us a lot of good ideas as to how to build the framework. Once we had the framework, we went out and did a lot of user capability, you know, usability studies. Um, the other thing is a design of a design a culture of iterative design and constant testing. So we developed the framework we put it out there for people to test, but testing doesn't end when you put it out there. It's like constant testing. We do testing probably twice a month, and that's going to be all the time in the future. So what we do with this design, we will put something out there, see if it works, look at the data analytics, are people using it? If it's being used, we keep it, and then get user feedback once we've put it out there. So people actually have something to look at before um, uh, before we like something that people have something to look at before we ask them what they want, and that's the team. So you can see it's quite a big team. We've got usability testers, we've got communications people, we've got a statistics librarian. That's the lady you see from the right. We've got developers. We've got the UI. So it's quite a big team all to support this new, this new, I guess, whole framework of design. Now that's the question. If you don't have that, would you be better off just sticking with Ex Libris? Because they've got 500 people doing this stuff. Um, and that's, you know, you have to make that decision before you embark upon what is a little bit of a step in the dark. So, the secret to it, the secret source for all this, is an API. It's just not the API, the Primo API. The API we're using has been written by the head developer. So um, essentially, there's a search API that searches every database that we have. And I will just skip over. This is how it works. So for Primo, it's using X services. Now, why are we using X services? Because when we were doing this in 2015, the API was so underdeveloped that we couldn't actually use it. Um, the idea is that we will transition to use the Primo API when we have all this other development stuff kind of um, sorted out. With Digital, which we don't like as a, I mean, it really is a tool of a product, you know. Um, so we do a nightly harvest into solar, and then when we do a search, it's in real time, but it's in our own solar index. Similarly with 
TV and radio, that's a separate database in Mongo, and that's also gone into solar. Then the website, we're using a Google search appliance, and that's in real time and returned records. Similarly, with an SQL database that we have for our connect records, which are, database, which are records that connect to databases. So we have a connect record for every um, um, EBSCO, Academic Search Premier, um, Scopus, etc. And because it's a plug and play thing, we also have future resources. We don't know what they are, but we've designed it in such a way that you can simply plug and play. And it all gets normalized, including URL creation, inside that API. So it gives us a lot of flexibility. The speed is in excellent, excellent speed. And we can control what, um, we have better control over what people get returned and what they see than um, if we'd gone maybe the primo way. So. And this is our basic server configuration. So we've got a, it's behind a VIP, we've got web route, then it's an um, F5 pull, and then two application servers. Um, and we control a lot of those servers. We have them in our central server farm, controlled by ITS, but our, our library um, staff have access to those and control those. Design. Well, that's always fun. As I say, we had a, um, we employed a designer to give us the basic framework. Um, but after that, and so the basic framework for the front page was a global navigation bar, and that will, that will brand the product across all of our um, products. So it, it's brands it across Primo, when we go to the native Primo interface. It brands it across um, TV and radio. So everywhere you can get back via the noble get, global navigation bar. Then we've got Discovery Zone. This is the front page. We can put that, plug that Discovery Zone in again. It's just plug and play, so we can plug that in anywhere. Um, and then we have a promotion section on the front page and news. And how are we um, going to deliver that? Well, now that we have um, it in place, essentially we've got the strategic division, uh, vision of the university, which informs the strategic vision of the library, which informs us. And we, we call it user-centered design. Essentially, it's, we've got user research, analyze requirements, design and develop, and that's just a virtuous circle. And so it's a really, you're, you're, it's a culture of design and test, design and test, rather than design this massive thing and then test it, uh, figure it, and then just leave it. Um, we test everything. We've got online feedback, which is that, um, what Matt was talking about yesterday, where he didn't think he liked that too much. He was more into this ethnographic stuff. Oh, well, we've got a bit of ethnographics as well. Um, so I can't find the e-journals on the database list, make this navigate no, uh, navigable instead of searchable. So we have... <laughs> yeah, so like academic staff members, uh, as you all, all know, and notoriously, I know what I, I know how to get to stuff, and I don't want it to change because now I have to learn something different. Um, so we we respond to it all, but whether we take it on board is a different matter. Um, user research obsession. So here we get ethnographic field studies, interviews. Um, so Cheryl Baster, who was the head of our research, the research component, and you may have seen a presentation by her. This is actually a slide from her presentation at Theta, at the Theta conference. They conducted um, this ongoing testing. And one of the most interesting things was this, this pop-up usability testing. So all you do is you um, grab one of those trestle tables, plonk it somewhere on campus, and just say, hey, you, do you want to come and test? So you get a kind of, it's not really randomized, but you get really interesting um, Results and it's sort of in a playful atmosphere because it's on. You're not in a room and you're not doing in-depth research. It's all just. Could you do this quickly? I, if I had to find um, Scopus, 
how would you go about finding that? And the way you do it on our thing is just you type in Scopus and you'd find the database. Um, so they have some, scri um, some scripts that they give and they give some prizes. And so the old design, we, we were, um, I'll just go through this. Um, the article is 66%. Now 100% of articles are being found. Previous exams, 38% were being found. The, the previous exams was the, the digital interface. So you'd search it in Primo, and then you would have to log in on the iframe, and then it would bring it up in a separate interface. This is a much nicer, uh, and our results are much better. And databases, 86% found the database that they required. So the question is, where to next? And I think, I think that the where to next will be this is um, one thing is to make our uh, New Zealand uh, cultural heritage more visible. So that's what we're developing. We're developing tools in order to make that um, happen. So if you do a library search uh, at the moment, if you search for Maori War, you might get all sorts of things, books about Maori War from um, histories written in Britain. We might we have the ability to weight our search. So, if it comes from our special collections, we could give that special weight. Um, the other thing is make it personal. Um, I'm, I suppose everyone's into personalization because once you, what we're what we're really trying to head towards is artificial intelligence. So, if you have logged in and you have searched for a whole lot of stuff, like you build up a record of searching, then we want the catalog to say, based upon your past searches, you might be interested in this new book that we have, this new articles, etc. So that's what we're driving at. Um, that's the end goal, I suppose. And what are the risks and rewards? Well, the risk is that you don't have the resources to maintain it. Um, New Zealand was really lucky in that it had the Christchurch earthquakes. So all this money came pouring in from Swiss insurance agencies and it kept the New Zealand economy bubbling along. <laughs> so I mean that's the truth, like the best thing that ever happened to the New Zealand economy during the, pre during the big recession was the earthquake in Christchurch. Um, so we've done rather well and so funding for tertiary, I mean if you don't count the human lives of course, but, um, but um, We've done rather well in tertiary funding. I mean, you know, when the merry-go-round stops, will we have the capacity to um, maintain the kind of support that we have? I think we will, because I think um, if they're going to cut staff, it'll be in other areas. So circulation is one area that, you know, it's becoming more automated. We've got the 3M automated um, thing. So if there's going to be staff cuts, it's not going to be in the digital development, because that's just going to grow and grow. Um, re but this is like, we've got one head designer. If he gets hit by a bus tomorrow, then we will be crying for a little while and going, we've got to get up to speed with other things. So the, big, the new big thing that we're going to be doing is documentation. That's one area where we've been really slack. And I'm not kidding, if, if he did get hit by a bus, then we would have to employ someone really quickly to try and maintain it. So it is a risk when you go out on your own um, in, a, in a complex system. And oh, that's the other thing, the more complex system. Um, we're going to build, we're thinking of building lots of things onto it, including this artificial intelligence. Well, that becomes more and more and more complex. You then have to add extra resource to cover that. Business as usual becomes perhaps some more complex if there are, you know, so you do need, that's the real <coughs> big threat to us, that we don't have the resources to cater for this. Um, the reward is we can offer a customised product offering. Um, we, um, at the time that we did it, we started up on this, we had Alma, but we still had the old Primo. 
and Ex Libris was saying, well, we're going to develop Primo and you should see what we're developing, but we didn't see anything. So that's why we headed off on our own as well. I mean, how long were they going to take? Now, they took till really 2016 before you, they came out with um, a product that, like the new product, the new UI. Uh, can we keep up with changing technology? We've written the, that whole um, uh, uh, API, the search API, has been written in Node.js, which is a pretty stock standard technology. It's nothing special. Um, the front end has been written in, um, I keep forgetting the name. I mean, I know it. It's JavaScript and, um, oh, the framework. I'm not going to die here. <laughs> What was it? I'm going to get back to you later, but anyway, <laughs> I, the name escapes me. But um, it's a it's a stock standard um, JavaScript framework, so uh, an uh, HTML framework rather, and so um, there's nothing should be able to go wrong because it's a backwards compatible. We have to be backwards compatible to IE8 at the moment, <coughs> and we can't see that JavaScript is going to change. If, it, if there's a radical change of JavaScript, then a whole lot of websites are going to be in trouble, and we'll make that transition at the time. As well as um, Primo is written in AngularJS, so we're all down the JS route. Um, the reward is a quick adoption uh, adaptation. That should be adaptation time. Adoption. I must have been thinking of adopting a child or something. But, um, so we can adapt really. Oh, four minutes. Okay, so we can adapt really quickly. Um, we, the other reward is we have added redundancy if the website should go down. Then the individual resources are still up. So if, our, if the website should fall over, well, you could always go back to our old Primo. But one of the other risks, and it's become apparent um, where we have an interconnection of technology, you, you'll have seen that we're still on the old Primo interface. And the reason we're on the old Primo interface is we were all set to go to the new UI because we think the new UI is miles better than the old interface. But in the new UI, um, facets are limited to 12 facets. So you can say and this and that and that and not that and not that. In the old UI, it was infinite. In the new UI, it's 12. You would never know that if you hadn't built our search engine. Because in order to do a search back to Primo, in order to link back to Primo, our, and we're using the um, X services rather than the API, um, we found that it broke a lot of our links because they were going, and this facet, and that facet, and that facet, and then you reach 12, and you get zero results back. So um, we contacted Ex Libris and they said, yeah, it's a bug in the new UI and we will fix it um, by August. So that delayed us from going early this year to at least August. And so that's another risk that you can, you know, that we need to mitigate. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it, I think. Okay, any questions? Can you? Can you not do a lot of that searching in Primo already? Are you like a re development or what, what's what patch do we um, we, we can do in Primo, it's mainly the UI start that was the that was the driver for this. That we said, do we want to use the Primo search box? and then bring the results back in Primo, or do we want to develop our own search engine? And we've developed, we're using um, Lucene and we're using Solar, so um, our, our searches are in many ways similar to the technology that underlies Primo, um, but we've just made that decision. I mean, yeah, that, that's kind of the driver was the UI. Everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.